sorry about your grandma. Are you coming to the luncheon? Okay. Sorry. sorry for the Thank you. Come on, Faith. We, uh, we better go. We don't want to be the last ones to arrive. Oh, that's your great-grandmother's old diary? I'm not sure why Mom even kept it. Something good will wants that. You're probably right about that. So, what should we do with it? I think I'll keep it. As a matter of fact, I want to keep this entire box. Are you sure, Faith? This is just a bunch of uh, worthless old relics. I know, Mom, but you did name me after her, and I barely knew her. Maybe I can get to know her through all this old stuff. Sure, okay, hon. Well, uh, I'm gonna go get a cup of coffee. You, you want one? I'll take one. Thanks, Mom. The wedding plans are in full swing. I managed to get three full weeks of leave. Jeff's mom thinks we should go to Niagara Falls, but we are on going on a cruise around the Bahamas and then taking a tour through the Mayan ruins. We want to make a real adventure out of this honeymoon. Faith! Turn that light out and go to sleep. You have school tomorrow. Uh, new files. I just found these in the latest batch of government declassified files. Anything good? Not yet. Is this the search for terrestrial alien residents? Yes. I'm Investigator Oakley. This is Investigator Brown. What can we do for you? I'm Faith. Faith Golterman. I feel ridiculous. No need to be nervous. You obviously have something important to talk about. It sounds crazy. <laughs> I'm sure we've heard crazier. Well, I'm sure you've heard of Roswell. 
July 1947, Roswell, New Mexico, the site of the most famous UFO crash in North America, officially denied and covered up by the U.S. government. Yes, we are aware of it. My great-grandmother served in the military. She was stationed at Wright-Patterson and present at Hangar 18 with the aliens. She helped them escape. And how did you come by this information? I recently found her diary. Man has kept records diligently since the advent of the written word. His accumulation of knowledge has grown exponentially with each passing decade. As he moved out into space, this knowledge was combined with that of many other races to create the single largest repository of information in the known universe. The repository is known as Memory Alpha. This is where you can access the Federation files. Don't spill it this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is incredible. <laughs> really? What makes that more credible than this? June 2nd, 1937, Biloxi, Mississippi. Strange lights are reported in the sky south of the city. Several citizens called the police in the military base. No official explanation was ever given. This report is a collection of the reports called in that night. It was kept classified until three months ago. That should tell you something. What? But the government took it seriously. Anyways, look at the last page. A witness saw a local farmer's truck floating in the sky in a beam of light. An investigation turned up no evidence. Case closed. True, nothing was found. Not the farmer, nor his truck. The farmer, Eugene Whitaker, was never seen again. His wife filed a missing persons report, but he was never located. You did not answer my question. Why is that diary more credible than this missing persons file? Since you've not read it, I'll forgive your skepticism. But this is a first-hand report by an eyewitness that can be verified. You did research the two names. Faith Garland Carlson served at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in 1947. She married Jeff Carlson, a scientist employed by the U.S. Air Force from 1943 through 1947. He was present at Wright-Patterson in July 1947. This could blow the lid off the government's cover-up of their knowledge of UFOs, extraterrestrials, alien technology, and who knows what else. You know how it will go. A soldier with mental issues, either hallucinating, on drugs, or just crazy. One piece of actual physical evidence is all it would take. But all we have here is a diary by some crazy woman and some sketches drawn by the same crazy woman. It's the drawing that's the most credible. And maybe she had some actual evidence. Didn't Miss Gilderman say she had a box of her grandmother's stuff? Great-grandmother. And yes, she did. We need to look through that stuff. Hmm. This does not look anything like a standard gray. Hello? Miss Gilderman. This is Detective Brown from Star Investigations. Please, call me Faith. Okay, Faith. And we were wondering about your great-grandmother's other things? What about them? We were hoping we can go through them. 
That's okay with me. Great. Can we meet you? I can bring them in. Oh, you sure? Yeah. Great. We look forward to seeing you. So why does everyone else see a big-eyed alien and this woman sees a big-eared alien? And why does that give her credibility? Cover up. The government released the descriptions of the greys. That way they can monitor close encounters and be able to tell the real events from the more unreliable reports. <laughs> Sometimes you are just a little too far out there. So if I understand you, if someone reports seeing a bug-eyed alien, the government ignores it because they created that image. But if someone reports seeing a large head and large eared alien, they're all over it? Exactly. Lunch? You buying? Sure, let's go. What's this? I thought it may have been an iPad left at her house by someone. I don't think it's hers. Could I look at this a little closer? I need to uh, verify its uh, manufacture date. Sure. It's of no use to me. Can I help you with this? No, I have it. Uh, we'll be in touch. That was a little rude. This symbol, I've seen it before. Really? Where? I don't know, but I'll find it. You look like hell. Did you work all night? We were onto something. Really? Yes. That symbol? I knew I'd seen it before. An internet search revealed multiple matches. After I filtered out the corporate logos and other business related matches, I found this. Check it out. Okay. What exactly am I looking at? Personal correspondence between Samuel Clemens and Jack London. Notice that several of the letters have the symbol drawn next to the signature. I see. This is Mark Twain's iPad. If I thought you were serious, I'd be mad at you right now. But I need you to go to Detroit and run down a lead for me. I'm going to Detroit to interview a lunatic who was kidnapping people for medical experiments? Yes, but specifically I want you to talk to the arresting officers. I'll send you their contact information while you're en route. Your plane leaves in three hours. Okay. What am I looking for? I don't know, but this guy Loomis claims that there were others involved who had laser guns. Got it. And where are you going? New York City Police Archives. Take a shower first.
July 7, 1947. Today the world changed. I had never given any thought to life outside of our planet, but today I met three living beings that came to Earth in a flying ship. The military had tasked Jeff with establishing communication with the aliens. It seems impossible. Jeff is not a linguist, and the general will not authorize any additional help. Hello? I can only locate one of the arresting officers. I just sent you his address and phone number. Okay. Got it. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. If you haven't already done so, please stow your carry-on luggage underneath the seat in front of you or in an overhead bin. We remind you that this is a non-smoking flight. Smoking is prohibited on the entire aircraft. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the laboratory smoke detectors is prohibited by... So the two people you were helping were cops? As it turns out, no. They, they must have been MIBs. MIBs. Do you mean men in black? Yes, they had to be. You did not mention that they were wearing black. And didn't you say one of them was a woman? Well, yes, one was a woman, maybe an alien hybrid. I see. Men in black that do not wear black. Nor were they men, and one was actually an alien. What made you come to that conclusion? The MIB part or the woman? Well, both. They must have been MIBs. They had laser guns and were shooting at some things that looked like lizard men. And, and the female had a weird complexion and her eyebrows looked fake. What do you mean fake? Well, they were kind of straight, but at an incline. Even weirder. Pretty sure her ears were pointed. She tried to hide them under her hair, but when she was shooting at the lizard man, they they popped out. Women shake their eyebrows all the time. But tell me about these lizards then. I didn't get a real good look at him, but he was pretty tall and it looked like he was wearing some kind of armor. How is Detroit? Well, interviewing that case is always fun. Sorry, but as you know, most of these leads turn out to be dead ends. Maybe not. Really? So what do you think? That's amazing. What does it mean? I'm not sure. Oh, I almost forgot. I also obtained this. A hair? Supposedly from the female alien in Loomis's car. The crime lab at the time came up with nothing from it. 
So they just gave it to you? <laughs> Not exactly. Evidence goes missing all the time. Anyway, with all the DNA records available now, we have a better chance at matching it. Well, that's true. With the general public giving their DNA to every genealogy site imaginable, the government has access to the vast majority of people's DNA, so we definitely should have it tested. I'll drop it off at the lab on my way home. Well, you're not the only one with some new evidence. Look at this. Okay, so where did you get this? It came from the wing camera of an Air Force fighter in 1960. It was one of the recently declassified files. But tell me if I'm wrong, but that's a photo of an unidentified object in U.S. airspace. And furthermore, it has identifying markings on it written in English. It appears to say NCC-1701. That seems to be a military designation. Is it an experimental aircraft? That's what I thought, but the rest of the file records that the object just appeared on radar out of nowhere. Fighters were scrambling. One fighter even got close enough to get several pictures of it before it vanished as quickly as it appeared. So, one arm of the government did not know what the other was doing. Maybe, maybe not. I'm still trying to track down the pilot. Uh, Captain John Christopher. Now, maybe it was an errant stealth technology test, but I think there's more to it than that. That actually seems to make a lot of sense. Well, we'll see. Well, I've got a cheating husband stakeout tonight, so read this and I'll go over the Detroit files and we'll compare notes tomorrow. This could take a while. Do you want me to do the stakeout? <laughs> no, it's okay, but thanks. Got the goods on the cheating bastard. We got a payday with one night's work. And while you were sleeping in, I found her. I did not know you lost her. Very funny. I mean, I found her on the internet. Really? Maybe. I scanned this in and did the usual searches on the FBI databases. You know, discreetly. And they had something on her? No, but facial recognition scans matched her to a photo in a local newspaper from Carbon Creek, Pennsylvania. That's fantastic. So you have her current address? Not exactly. The article was from 1957. She was in the background of a photo about a local mining cave-in. I don't see how this falls into our kind of research. I didn't either. But I started perusing the local newspaper at the time, and I found out that six months prior to that photo being taken of her, there was a meteor strike two miles outside of town. And? No and. No crater was found. Just a couple reports of something impacting. Then we have this photo of the same woman who is suspected of being an alien in Detroit. It just seems interesting. Well, it does look like her, but honestly, facial recognition is an imperfect technology, and that match is hardly conclusive. But since we're on the subject, and given the time that I had last night to uh, go through the new files, check this out. same two from yesterday? Hold your horses. Well, I see pointed ears and tapered eyebrows. 
So where are these from? Well, that's just it. This pair is from a police report in New York City from 1930. They were caught stealing clothes and then they attacked a police officer and escaped. This pair is from a report for a call for help from a woman in an office. Uh, 1967, New York City, and Miss Roberta Lincoln placed a call for help. Police responded. Uh, the man escaped from a third floor office with no exterior doors. These were her descriptions of the men, but they were never located. And when police tried to follow up, Miss Lincoln refused to cooperate. And the third set? Oddly, they're from a report at McKinley Rocket Base on the very same day in 1967. They were arrested for trespassing during a rocket launch. They had several unusual handheld devices and one of the base security officers said that he saw them disappear into sparkles of light. Even more interesting, a nuclear warhead rocket test went awry the very same day. I'm sure you noticed. In two of these, the men have logos on their shirts resembling the image on that iPad. Yes, I did. So what does it mean? I don't know, but I'd like to see if we can find this Roberta Lincoln, if, if she's still alive. Good morning. Morning. Good news. There you go. Thank you. Alright, let's have it. I found Roberta Lincoln. And she is coming down to talk to us. So let's compare notes before she gets here. What did you think of the diary? So it was very compelling. A UFO crashed. Three aliens survived. First they said that they were here to help us develop new technology. Then they said that they were here to invade us. Then they said they accidentally crashed here from the future. A fourth alien shows up that can change shape. Then Garland and her fiance help them all escape by using the energy from a nuclear blast. And I checked and there was a report of a UFO sighting during that atomic test. The facts in this diary that can be verified do suggest that it can be true. We have everything but a smoking gun. Come, Come in. Come in. I have a delivery. Okay. There you go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. This is it. Well? They were able to extract the DNA from the sample. Great, so we can run it through our genealogy database and find out who this woman was. No, we can't. Why not? While a complete DNA sample was extracted and evaluated, the results must be considered tainted and not valid. The DNA results indicate that this sample belongs to a creature whose cellular structure is based on copper. I don't think we're going to be finding a copper-based person with DNA filed in on an online database. That's true, but you do realize we now have the smoking gun we were looking for. Mrs. Oakley. I'm Karen Oakley. Hi, I'm Roberta Lincoln. Do you want to talk to me? Yes. Yes, Miss Lincoln. Please have a seat. Be good, Ariel. Her, her name is Ariel. Thank you for coming, Miss Lincoln. Oh. oh. <laughs> Just call me Bobby, honey. Okay, Bobby. As I explained on the phone, we're looking into some cold cases and came upon a file generated when you called about a break-in at an office building you were working at in the 60s. Oh, I just love the 60s. <laughs> we were wondering if you remember anything about these two men. He 
He's a handsome fellow. Is he your husband? No, Miss Lincoln. These men broke into your office. I haven't been working for years. Do you, me do you mean somebody broke into my house? No, Miss Lincoln. 1968, Manhattan. You were working for an encyclopedia company. Oh, nobody uses encyclopedias anymore. They just go look up things in a computer. No, Miss Lincoln. Do you recognize these men? Is that so? You can talk to your cat? Sure. She said it's time for dinner. I hope she wasn't confessing to making a deposit in my office. Ugh. Well, Miss Lincoln, Bobby, I think we are through here. If by chance you remember anything about the break-in, please call us. It is lovely seeing the both of you. You make a lovely couple. Are you sure we should let her walk the streets alone? She seems slightly confused. Slightly? Well, she did find her way here just fine. She's not alone. She has Ariel. Maybe so. But here in a while, I think I'll give her a call to make sure she made it home. So, they have one diary from 1947, a personal computer from about hundreds of years in the future, and one hair of a Vulcan. That's correct. Well, they do have fragmented police reports on time travel incursion. What, what would be the danger if they put it all together and discover time travel is possible? And Earth has been visited by beings from the future. <laughs> The general population has been more receptive to the idea of extraterrestrial life. <laughs> the knowledge of time travel, this early in development for human beings, it could be catastrophic. So, all the evidence, meager as it is, must go away. Yes, and soon. Lincoln, they're intelligent. And I do believe that they're not afraid to share the evidence or their theories openly. Agreed. Tonight, then. Let's go get some food. about it all night, and I think I found the answer. Me too, but go ahead. I know it sounds crazy, but if I said time travel, what would you say? Exactly what I was thinking. You know, Mark Twain wrote about time travel, possibly through experience. The Roswell aliens, what did they call themselves? Uh, Ferengi. One of their stories was that they accidentally landed here through a time warp. Well, the MIB alien and the woman you found on the internet could be the same person, if she was a time traveler. And the pointy-eared guy could have been New York and McKinley at the same time if he was able to travel through time. Well, we'll be able to prove it after we crack the iPad. And, and we have extraterrestrial DNA. Prepare to make history. got the iPad. The hair sample is gone too. No sign of forced entry. 
commenced our investigations. You say a corpse of an unknown animal has washed up on the beach? Okay, got it. We'll head over there right away. Take a lot of pictures. Just in case the authorities try to remove it before we get there. Okay, thanks. Well, looks like we have two mysteries today. How's that? A sea monster and the break-in. Break-in's no mystery. You know it and I know it. It's the ongoing cover-up by the government. And now we know why. You think the government knows about the time travelers? Of course they do. How else do you explain the UFO with English markings on it? It's an American craft from the future. And we also have the iPad with English markings written on the back of it as well. Well, you may be right. But let's go get the sea monster before the next cover-up begins. <laughs>